Here to double the bet. No, 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 stop. We're friends, we're friends. Kara is my friend. The Mandalorian receives a message from Greet Karga. Karga's town has been overrun by Imperial troops led by the client, who is desperate to recover the child. Karga proposes that the Mandalorian use the child as bait in order to kill the client and free the town. In return, Karga will square things with the guild, which would allow the Mandalorian and the child to live in peace. Sensing a trap, the Mandalorian recruits Cara Dune and Quill to assist him. Quill has also rebuilt and reprogrammed IG-11 and the group journeys to Navarro. Upon arrival, they meet Karga and his associates, but en route to the town are attacked by Minox. Karga is injured, but the child uses the Force to heal his wound. In return, Karga shoots his associates and explains his original plan to kill the Mandalorian and take the child to the client until the child saved him. The group formulates a new plan. Karga will pretend that Dune captured the Mandalorian, and all three will enter the town to meet the client. Meanwhile, Will will return the child to the ship. During the meeting where the Mandalorian claims that the child is sleeping, the client receives a call from Moff Gideon, whose troops surround the building and open fire, killing the client, the droid bartender, and the stormtroopers inside. Gideon arrives and boasts that the child will soon be in his possession. In the desert outside town, two scout troopers track and seemingly kill Quill before taking the child. Well, that was the synopsis of this past episode, number seven of The Mandalorian, entitled The Reckoning. And it marked the return of Gina Carano as Cara Dune. We see her fighting some oversized Star Wars type alien bounty hunter, whatever you want to call it. That guy looked pretty intense. That kind of reminded me that I was thinking maybe Nathan, uh, Jones, who those of you are not familiar, is a wrestler. Dude was like something like six foot nine, three hundred some pounds, and guy. You see him in a lot of movies, playing heavies, playing uh, you know villains, bad guys, and I don't know if that was him. I'd have to look that up. But uh, you see her fighting, and she actually is able to take him down and win some money, win some currency or coin, whatever they they were betting. She got that. And we saw something that kind of left us probably wondering what's going to be the fate of Quill, who towards the end, he was trying to get the child safety to the ship and, in, in, and try to um, do some uh, you know, in kind of uh, engage a security, port pro security protocol, I think if that's what Mandalorian called it. That way, no ship, no nobody, anybody could penetrate it, and the, you know the child would be safe. But scout troopers, who were listening in on Mandalorian when the Mandalorian was trying to warn him and tell him to get to the ship right away, they seemingly killed him and they took the child. And the reason why that happened is because when the Mandalorian was given a offer from Greed Karga to kind of uh, make it to where they do a, a, you know, kind of use the child as bait, try to lull them into, I guess, a false sense of security that they, they're going to get the child. But he wanted to kill, Rick Carga said, Martin Lauren, they killed a client, 
kill the client and then they will they be, then be assured assured him and uh Mandalorian and the child that they will be at peace and they won't have to run anymore. You don't work something out with the guild, it's Greek Karga. He turns around and it and pretty much ends up that he actually was planning to kill Mandalorian and take the child for himself and take him to the guild, take it to the client. But when and this is something that happened you know, earlier, we saw Vegeta Carano and Mandalorian, I mean Greek I mean the Caradun and the Mandalorian were arm wrestling. And I guess the child thought that, you know, the Mandalorian was being, you know, he was in trouble. And so he raised his hand and he started doing a force choke on Kara Doom. And the Mandalorian had to grab him and tell him, no, that's my friend. And, <clears throat> you know, this little guy is more powerful and the Mandalorian knows that he is more powerful than they know. It's funny because when they're in the situation that they're in, you know, they're like, even in previous episodes, they're in danger. They're doing all this stuff and they never let the, they, they know that the child is powerful. The child could probably take out those Imperial troopers, those um, stormtroopers, those bounty hunters that are coming away, but I think that it's because he's a child in Mandalorian's eyes, you know, he sees him as innocent and he wants to protect them more than just see what he can do to them. And um, this also leads to the child coming to the aid of Grief Karga. There, you have these, uh, wow, you know, these, um, they're, um, you know, they, you know, they were going to go to the client, right? And Grief Karga had uh, three of his men with him. Which they, re they it got dark, so they arrived at the at a place where they can camp, and they're gonna go once it's dark, and then they're gonna head out once light, once you know they hit light. And then they're attacked by Minox, who you know were able to kill one of the other guards and then one of the other guys of Greek, with Greek Karga's men. They take away one of the Bergs. The other one gets killed, I think, because got because one of the Minox that they killed fell on top of it. And then Greek Karga is, you know, he's slashed and poisoned. He's poisoned and it seems like he's going to be, you know, gone. He's going to die soon. And then in comes the, uh, the child just, you know, scooting along, walking towards uh, Grief Karga. Grief Karga is funny because, you know, I mean, Cara Dune goes, would someone do something about him? And then Quill's like, you know, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, just let him, you know, he wants him to just let him do what he's going to do. And then uh, Grief Karga's like, uh, he's like, he's like, he's going to eat me. You know, <laughs> that part was funny. I like that part. It's all hilarious. Uh, and then um, he just puts his hand on this, this wound, and he starts to, you know, heal. You start seeing the poison go away, and as he, you know, as after he does that whole thing, he like falls back because he just used up all his energy at that point, at that all his force, and then that changes his mind, you know, with Karga because. You know, he was going to kill the Mandalorian and give the kid or the child to the client. So he confesses to Mandalorian and says, hey, this is what I was going to do. You know, I was going to kill you and give the child to the client. But he changed his mind. Kara doing is like, she's not having it. She's kind of, you know, like, can we trust this guy? You know? And then he come up with a plan, you know, to pretend that Kara doing is going to, going to, take him in, you know, he has his, the cuffs on and everything. And he pretend to have the child in the little carriage, that little, uh, which um, Quill, you know, he made it so where it was, I guess, you know, bulletproof and more structurally sound and more secure. And for the final, Mandalorian said that he wanted, <clears throat> he wanted him to make one so that the, it's secure enough and kind of, you know, enough so that the child can sleep better. And like I said in the intro, um, in the, the synopsis, um, 
once they arrive, they're already, um, you know, the client and, and you know, his troopers there are already onto him. The scout troopers already are like patched into whatever that comms are, or whatever that thing that the, uh, the Mandalorian is communicating with the with Quill. And then, you know, they were able to catch up to Quill and seemingly kill him and take the child. And that's how it ended. So, like I said in the beginning, you know, it leaves us with some questions on whether or not he's dead. You know, Quill. And what is to be of, uh, you know, Grief Karga and Mandalorian and Carrie Dune? And what about the child? Is the child now in the possession of Moff Gideon? Well, that's uh, for us to wait until uh, next, the next episode, which is probably going to be coming out this week. You know, again, like I say, uh, I to totally and thoroughly enjoyed The Mandalorian. I think it's a totally amazing show. It's something positive that Disney has put out. You know, this is a wait and see as to how your other shows are going to be. You know, and other movies are, that are coming out. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker just came out. I haven't seen it yet. I plan on seeing it, but I'm waiting for the, the you know, all the frenzy and the, you know, all the people that are going to see it. And there are already people that are already motherfucking it and saying that it's worse, it's awful, it's this and that. And I'm just like, I don't care because I'm going to go see it. I'm going to see it for myself. And then, hey, I might go there and think, come back and think it's a pile of garbage, you know, but I'm going to go see it. I'm not letting any of these people who, go into it already negative you know they go into it negative already they don't even give it a chance but you know I guess the track record of the recent you know the newest uh, trilogy um, going to be trilogy now with the rise of skywalker you know i guess they have i guess they have a point of not trusting it but you know i tend to not let people you know cloud my judgment i go by myself my own thinking going in and see what happens you guys might be right the ones that don't I found it awful. But anyway, that was the my thoughts on this episode uh, of The Mandalorian, episode seven, entitled uh, The Reckoning. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I continue to enjoy uh, the series so far. And for those of you who stopped by and uh, checked out my video, I appreciate it, and I appreciate all of your support. And in closing, and as always, take care.